Hi there guys, Neil Atta Tally Autos here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we're going to be looking at this Alfa Romeo Giulia because over the years all I ever hear is oh you don't want to buy Alfa Romeos they have got tons of problems with them and I've heard that throughout my entire life ever since the Alfa Suds were made in the 1970s. Now we're talking this is 50 years ago now and that has still stuck with the Alfa Romeo name. So what I'm going to try and dispel in this video is the myth of that Alfa Romeos fall apart after a couple of years. This car here now is just under seven years old and it's done 72,000 miles. So today we're going to get this on the ramp, go over it, see how the paintwork's holding up. We're going to see how the undersides holding up, where there is rust, where there isn't, what suspension components are wearing out, what rubber's starting to deteriorate. And we're going to check it all over and see how it's holding up to try and dispel this rumor that Alfa Romeos are unreliable and they will fall apart. Let's start by checking out the outside of the car. Not looking for dinks and dents or anything like that. All I'm looking for is how is the bodywork holding up. There's no signs of lack appeal. The front bumper colour on this white car is still a good match. As most of the car is aluminium, you're not going to really find any rust on any of the body panels. Wing mirror colour is still matching well with the car. The usual spots is uh, rust around the windscreen on any older Alphas, but that is all fine. Again, rear bumper colour is a good match. Body panel fitment is still good. There's no water ingress in any of the rear lights on this one. The exhaust tailpipes still have a shine to them. Everything still seems to fit pretty well. A little bit of a discolorization to this trim panel here, but that can happen depending on what cleaning products you use on the car. So let's see what's wearing on the inside of the car. Door seals on the door are still holding up well. Still holding up pretty well. It does help that you've got this kick plate here, which does kind of block some of the arch, arch liner, the, the rubber around the door. Um, there's no signs of pinching or wear on this. A little sign of wear along here where your body rubs when you get in and out of the car. So give that another 20, 30,000 miles. This might start to wear through. The door pull, no signs of wear, a couple of light scratches. The window and mirror switches still look like they are brand new. You know, you would have thought some of this metal paint would have uh, worn off and anything around here, but that's all okay. The lower part of the door card is still all good. It's quite a tough material, so it'll be quite hard to scratch that. The driver's seat has some wear on the bolster, but nothing I would worry about. That could easily be recolored if you were that particular about it. Armrest is still all good and no signs of wear. The door stays are still nice and silent. Center console and gear knob are looking good still. The ashtray drinks holder cover still functions perfectly. Tiniest amount of wear to the top of that, I'd say, but nothing to worry about. The lights on the gear stick still light up and the plastic surface hasn't scratched. The first bit of wear I've seen is on the start stop button, where that is starting to wear through there. The rest of the steering wheel buttons are in a good order. Wear on the leather, yeah, some signs of wear, but nothing I would worry about at all. You normally see on the edges here where it would start to wear through, but that is still good both sides. The infotainment screen is still all good. No scratches, no dead pixels, no issues with that at all. And the same with the infotainment center binnacle. Now let's check under the bonnets. Now, unfortunately on these, there isn't much to see because of the massive engine cover on them, but it does come off quite easily revealing the engine. Now let's just check for oil leaks around here because this is a common problem area for leaks. And that looks okay. No signs of any rust whatsoever in the engine bay. All plastics seem to be holding up well. Again, no signs of oil leaks. The diesel engine still sounds absolutely sweet and nice steady idle with no hunting issues or anything like that. So it is in perfect working order this engine after 72,000 miles. Steering is still nice and tight. 
I can't feel any plate in anything there. Wheel bearing is still nice and loose. A little bit of noise coming from the brakes, but um, they do have a lip on the rear of them, so that would cause that noise. Caliper isn't very shiny anymore. It uh, definitely has lost a little bit of its uh, color. The rest of the suspension components I will go over later, but visually there's nothing showing concern. No leak from the shockers, no springs are broken. All the rubber bushes are intact. Brake pipes are still in good order. No signs of rust underneath anywhere here. I believe it's all aluminium anyway. A little bit of rust on the brake pipe connector, but we can live with that. Now, the rear wheel handbrake is on, so I can't test the wheel bearing, but everything feels nice and tight still here. Rear caliper has a smallest bit of corrosion on it where the pads have probably been changed and it's been chipped in the past. It still does have a shine to it. The inner arch is all rust free from a bit of metal I can see. Right, now let's go over the underside. We'll start by trailing the exhaust from back to front. For seven years old, that is looking pretty fine to me. The exhaust flexi pipe is still in perfect order. Yes, there is some surface corrosion, but nothing I would say is gonna cause it any problems immediately. All the under trays are still intact and not starting to fall off. Rear springs are not broken. A little bit of rust coming through on the rear subframe. Nothing that would could cause concern, and it is a, at a level I would expect on this age of car. Some corrosion on the inside of the rear wheels, but hey, it's seven years old, it's done 72,000 miles, and they've probably never been cleaned. Now, all the underbody is very hard to check because it is all covered, but I would imagine it is perfectly fine under there. All the aluminium components of the suspension look okay. All the bushings look okay. They're not starting to crack. All the brake pipes, brake hoses look okay. Let's have a look at the underside of the engine. From what I can tell immediately is there is no oil leaks coming from the engine. That all looks lovely and clean. No signs of any coolant leaks. All the engine mounts appear to be in good order. No signs of any cracking on any pipe work, no signs of any rust. Small oil leak here, which looks like it's coming from the intake manifold. So that's gonna probably want an oil segregator. So the oil segregator is on the engine and that gets clogged up, there's like a filter in there. And that needs to be done with the cam belt change normally. So it should have had one done, but as that's leaking, I would assume it probably hasn't had one. Hence it's kicking all the oil through the intake system. So. That's probably one problem that's gonna to wanna to get rectified, but you don't have to do it with the cam belt. You've just gotta take the auxiliary belt off to change it. So guys, what do you think of that? I think this is actually a damn good car, considering the mileage and now the fact it's seven years old. Yes, it has a little bit of rust on the rear subframe, but that was literally the only part I could find rust on. And any car that's seven years old, I bet you go and check a Mercedes and check a BMW, and they all have the same amount, if not more, rust on them. And thoroughly checking the whole car, the only problem I could find on it is an oil leak, which could be fixed for probably under £300. So really, these are quite reliable. I mean, in fact, in the JD Power Surveys, Alfa Romeo are ranking one of the highest now. So the dealer service is getting much better than they used to be, and the cars are a lot more reliable, and they also drive as one of the best cars out there in its segment. So let me know what you guys think about it. Let me know what you're interested in buying and I'll give you a heads up on whether it's worth it or not. So thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.